I am Rachel Romeliotis, a senior editor at O'Reilly Media, and I'm here with Tony Santos. He is a user experience lead at Mozilla, and he is going to be one of the speakers at OzCon 2013. Thank you for joining me. Oh, thank you for having me. So let's get right to the questions. Uh, what is human-centered design? Um, well, human-centered design is really a design process um, that kind of puts a little more emphasis on on doing research and, and kind of finding out what the problems that people really have are, and then trying to design solutions specifically to those problems in, in ways that, that work in the, the language of the user or the way that people are thinking about things that they have, um, as opposed to the more traditional sense way that design has been practiced, um, where designers go off and come up with some brilliant idea and then push it out into the world. So why is it, I mean, already I think I know the answer to the que this question, but why is it so important that developers consider this when they are creating um, apps or products? Um, well, uh, just really basically, um, it's important because it's to really make good things, good software, good hardware, good technology. Um, we need to really be solving people's actual problems instead of just solving problems that we think are really cool. Um, from a more practical standpoint, um, it's really become kind of a big differentiator in technology today is um, you're doing things that really mean something to people in terms that they can understand instead of just having a big long list of features that people kind of salivate over. I think those days are kind of gone now. Um, and open source software especially can get a little bit of a boost against companies that are spending tons and tons and tons of money on things that smaller open source projects don't have if they can actually focus their time and, and energies doing things that people care about. Yeah, it almost seems like there's a simplification of uh, apps and software right now, uh, I, I guess across the board, uh, it seems like to me. Um, so how do you actually go about this? How do you figure out what users want? Um, so there's a lot of different ways to do it. Um, you know, it, it can be as simple as sitting down with some people that use your software and just asking them questions, finding out about the things that they, how they actually use whatever it is that you're making, um, you know, what they do for a living, problems that they actually run into. And it can kind of scale up from there to full-blown blown studies. Um, you know, at Mozilla we do, um, we have an actual dedicated user research team and they'll do things like go around the world and go into people's houses and sit down and talk with them and see how they're using their software and our products. Um, so it kind of spans the, the you know, uh, runs the gamut, I should say, between, you know, something that you can sit down at a restaurant or a bar and have a chat with somebody and kind of get an idea of what it is you're supposed to do, all the way to full-blown lab studies of two-way mirrors and all of that, the bold and ends. So I was going to ask, and I think you kind of alluded to this, what if you're uh, just an independent developer or maybe from a small firm, would you suggest, you know, going out and talking to people in bars or, or being a little bit more informal? Is that an okay way to go about that? Um, yeah, I always I always say my mantra has been for a long time, um, you know, some research is better than no research. Um, and a lot of people, when they hear the term research, they think it has to have some sort of really scientific and academic rigor. Um, and those aren't bad things to have, but at the same time, you know, um, the whole point of going out and doing research is to learn something that you don't know. Um, or to confirm something that you think is true, but you're not sure. Um, and so if that takes the form of going out and talking to people that you know are using your product um, or your software or whatever it is, your project, um, and it's just kind of informal, that's better than not doing it at all and kind of just plugging away at the thing that you think is really good. Um, and, and open source projects specifically have a really great means of doing this already in that they have a lot of community involvement. They tend to. Um, and so you have a very active and engaged community, especially in larger open source projects, but even some smaller ones, um, who not only are there to be asked these questions, because they often tend to be using it, um, but, but they also are, tend to be really enthusiastic about doing it, which makes doing this kind of research that, and, and this kind of uh, knowledge finding that people tend to think is laborious and time consuming, it makes it a lot easier um, and a lot cheaper to do because you have this really engaged group of people who are excited to help you make your thing better. You make a very good point. It's almost like open source was made for this actually. And maybe Absolutely. unofficially has been doing it for a while, sort of without a name. Um, yeah, I think to some extent, um, you know, uh, a lot of open source projects kind of 
have been doing this where they take in feedback and they'll they'll get contributors that are that are working on it because they're interested and they see a new niche. Um, and that's part of it. Um, I think where open source projects need to move at this point, and a lot of them are starting to, is actually going out and engaging people who are not in a position for whatever reason, whether they don't have the technical ability or they don't have the time or whatever it is, who are still using these products and talking to them about it too. And it turns out that a lot of those people are just as excited about being able to contribute in some way to this thing that they love um, by, by helping to answer questions and, and giving the people that are actually making it some more insight into making it better for them. Can you tell me some success stories actually about open source projects that have done this? Um, yeah, I think Firefox is a fantastic um, uh, success story, and I don't personally work on Firefox here, um, but a large portion of our user experience team does, um, and we have we do tons of research um, around Firefox, and a lot of the changes that are coming into Firefox now um, are changes that come out of talking to users, um, and we have 400 and something million users, but um, you know we talk to as many of them as we can, and we get a lot of feedback from the community and through all of our stuff. Mozilla is kind of a really great place to be because it's a big, like we have a lot of the resources of a larger company, but we still have that enthusiasm that is just that makes open source software a really exciting place to be. Um, and you see it in, in changes like that. We're making changes on the developer side of things, which is where I do work. Um, and uh, you know, we just ran, uh, just tried to run a study that um, we actually had to close early because we had such a like a groundswell of support for people that just wanted to help us learn, you know, how people were using developer documentation um, to help us redesign our developer site. And uh, there was just so many people that we couldn't, like, we just couldn't listen to them all um, because we just didn't have the time and the manpower to go through thousands and thousands and thousands of responses. Um, but we got hundreds in like less than 36 hours. It was fantastic. Um, and, you know, people were excited that, for the next one. Um, and they're really engaged. And I think that if you can do that with, if you're a developer, if you're a designer, if you're a document writer, whatever your role is in an open source project, I think, um, and this is kind of, uh, you know, what I hope to kind of get across in a little more detail in my talk. Um, if you can take that enthusiasm that you have for your product and harness that and then use it to help drive the direction of whatever your open source project is, you only keep that feedback loop going and people get more excited and more enthusiastic and they really want to help and your project just grows and grows and it's fantastic to see. Yeah, that's great. It turns from sort of helping you with research to a community and a successful project. Mm -hmm. So uh, one final question. Um, so let's say, you know, you've gathered up some information um, it's telling you, you know, maybe the direction you were going is wrong and you should, you should either reverse it or maybe tweak it a little bit. What are sort of the first steps that you would do uh, to incorporate that? Um, so what we do is we tend to go out and ask a lot of questions to figure out the way people are doing things or the way that they're using what we have now. And then we take that back and we try to uh, untangle people's problems. Um, if you go out and ask people, you know, like, what would you change about this? They tend to frame all of their answers and things that they know about, and that tends to not lead you into really innovative solutions. That's kind of where the design part comes in. You have to take all of this information and, and then kind of mash that up with um, the things that you know about the product and the things that you know about the technology and the things that you know about design. And this is the things that designers and engineers tend to be trained at to be really good, the synthesis of this information. Um, you take it back and then you say, you know, the way that, that it generally works and the way that we do it is you take it back and you say, okay, well, we found out that this and this and this and this, so now we need to make these changes. And we just kind of push it into the development cycle um, you know, when we can, it's it's really um, you know we use it a lot for feature generation so much, or just as much as we do for kind of revision and things like that. Um, and uh, I mean, really, you tend to get a sense if you have something that's really not working. You tend to have a sense of that before you go out and do research um, or testing of any kind. Um, but when you have it and it doesn't work, um, you know, generally the solution is to try and refactor it a little bit, not just cut stuff out completely. I've never been in a situation where um, research has killed something completely. Well, that's, that's good news. Um, well, thank, you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> thank you for that. It's um, definitely an interesting and important topic, and I look forward to hearing more about it at OSCON. Great. Thank you very much. Thanks.